So first, let's talk about this serial killer named Eddie Lee Mosley, a.k.a. The Rape Man. Eddie Lee Mosley, a.k.a. The Rape Man, was born in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, on a date of March 31st, 1947. He terrorized Fort Lauderdale and Lakeland, Florida between the years of 1973 through 1987, with his youngest victim only being eight years old. His favorite method of killing would be strangulation. The right man grew up with 10 siblings. He was the third child out of 10. He developed acute respiratory disease as a child. This led to multiple issues from him. He had an intellectual disability, mental disability, and had problems learning. It was so bad that he failed second grade multiple times and had to leave school at a young age at the age of 13 in the third grade. Throughout his teenage years, he worked as a low-skill labor job. He was described as antisocial. His low-skill labor job didn't last long as he turned into the life of crime. His, his crimes cases were way darker than just a robbery, though. Not only was he guilty of robbery, but he is also guilty of assault, murder, and attempted rape. Between the years of 1971 through 1973, 150 rape cases were reported in his area. All the cases had the same description of the rapist. He was described as a young black man with a scar on his cheek. The way he lured his victims were by making violent threats to them if they didn't comply with him. He would force them to isolated locations. That's where he would rape and then strangle them. On July 23rd, 1973, his dark past caught up with him. Three women accused him of being their rapist. After they pointed him out, more after they pointed him out, 40 more women came out and testified against him. On top of that, he was a prime suspect of the murders of two black women in early 1973. Unfortunately, due to the lack of evidence, he never got charged for their murders. However, he was never sent to prison for any of his horrible crimes. Instead, he got sent five years in Florida State Hospital after being labeled as mentally insane. While he was there, the number of rape cases dropped dramatically in Fort Lauderdale. February 1st, 1973, excuse me, February 1st, 1979, he was released. After it was believed he was medically cured, that turned out to be a fatal mistake. Seven months later, after being released, Seven more women were found to have been raped and murdered in his area. So naturally, he became the prime suspect in their murders. To make things even more suspicious, he moved three hours and 30 minutes away to Lakeland, Florida after being suspected for their murders. Afterwards, two more people went missing in Lakeland. He was suspected to have been reason responsible for the disappearances of Ida Eagles and Letha May Williams. He was arrested and questioned for those disappearances. Unfortunately, since they could not find their remains, he was released. He returned to Flor Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where he got arrested for attempted rape of a young girl. This led to him getting to sentenced to sixteen. Excuse me. This led to him getting sentenced to fifteen years in prison. While in prison, Eagles and Williams' remains were found in skeletons. It was said that he was much feared man in prison. He was known for physically and sexually assaulting other inmates. He even threatened a CO. While he was in prison, his family was working on getting him out. They ended up hiring a new lawyer to overturn the previous case. They stated the previous lawyer did not do a psychological examination. Also, the new lawyer was able to point out multiple flaws with the old court case and got it overturned. This caused the rape man to get a shorter sentence. He would be released from prison on December 1983. It, he was only free for one month before he was back on the radar. He was on the radar because two more bodies were discovered. 36-year-old Gerald Ger, Geraldine Barfield and 54-year-old Emma Cook. The bodies were discovered to have been strangled and raped. In, 19, in May of 1984, he was arrested for the rape of 22-year-old. During the trial, he claimed that the sex was consent. His lawyers won that case, and he would be released October of that same year. Three years later, he had attention on his name again when he was a prime suspect of rape and strangulation of 24-year-old Centrao Love. May 17, 1987, he was arrested again for stealing. There, the authorities were able to match his blood with other samples taken from his past victims. 
When he was questioned, he did not he did what every other criminal does and tried lying his way out. However, his stories weren't adding up because he confused himself. Getting dates, locations, and even the damn seasons wrong. He eventually admitted to killing Teresa Gills and Emma Cook. On July 1987, multiple sex workers claimed he was aggressive with him. Due to his IQ being only at 57, he was incompetent for trial and got sent to Florida State Hospital. 13 years later in 2000, it was discovered he was responsible for the murders of 29-year-old Doretta Brown, Young Brown in 1984, 34-year-old Veta Turner in 1973, 13-year-old Sanja Yvette Marion, 1973, 21-year-old Terry Jennings Cummings in 1979, and, of course, Emma Cook and Teresa Gills. It was also discovered that he was responsible for the murder of 8-year-old Chandra Whitehead in her own home, which Frank Lee Smith was fal falsely convicted of and spent the rest of his life in prison. Oh, shit. Which Frank Lee Smith was falsely convicted of and spent the rest of his life until his death on death row. For more information on that, I suggest checking out A Web of Injustice by Casey Renee. I will place the link in the description. The right man was sentenced... Was the right man spent the rest of his 20 years being locked away from society before dying himself from COVID-19 in May 28th, 2020.